Isaiah 7, uh, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. The prophet was speaking not about a God who is in some faraway place, but a God who is near us, who comes to be with us in our work, our play, our time together as a family. The first Advent candle was the sign that Jesus brings light and hope. We light the first candle as we think about what Jesus is coming to the world means to the world. We light the second candle to show that through Jesus, God came to dwell among us and is present with us even now. We'll stand to, to join in our call to worship. The day of God is coming. Lift up your voices, cry out from the strength God provides you. We await God's coming day with anticipation. We see the peace and patience of the Lord. God will feed us like a shepherd. God will gather us in gentle, caring arms. God's hand is upon us in blessing. We are welcomed by God's steadfast love. Let us join together in our opening prayer. Holy Lord God, God, your glory is revealed to us day by day as valleys of despair are lifted up and mountainous problems are left. In your presence we see the Lord in our immediate situation. We catch a glimpse of your eternal purpose. So come among us now and speak your word of peace. Feed us with your truth and equip us to welcome Christ's time. Amen. Our first uh, hymn, number 211, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
shooting. Let me call us into the attitude of confession. We have turned away from holiness and godliness. We have chosen to fit into society rather than stand out. Let the church confess this for us. Join with me. God of glory, we confess that we have not recognized you in our midst or listened to your voice. Our faith is fragile and our faults still unrecognized amid our self concern. We have lived as if there were no need to account for the life we have been given. Our church focuses more on our own survival than on its mission to the world. We come to you today with sincere repentance for our neglect. We have failed to prepare the way for the Christ entry into our everyday world. Come to us. Take a moment and take your individual petitions to God. God's glory is waiting in the burst into the midst of all those who receive the good news. Amen. A couple things that uh, we have before us before as we begin to the prayers and joys and concerns. One is a, a thank you from Bobby. Uh, on behalf of our family, I want to thank you so much for all that you did for our family over the past two weeks with Dad's passing. We so appreciate the full arrangement at the service and all the work that everyone did for the uh, lunch and prior to the service. I do not have words to express our appreciation and gratitude for everything that you all, all that all of you did. So uh, I thank you, Noah. There are also a couple of activities I should have mentioned as we began today. Uh, one of them is. Uh, that next Sunday evening we'll be having our Christmas party. Yeah. Uh, so if you haven't gone a name, I'm sure that Bonnie will provide one for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're all gone. They're all gone. <laughs> well, you're too late. Uh, <laughs> uh, so also, uh, we're running kind of running late on time, and I know that there's a Christmas. Uh, gathering for the community up at the schoolhouse on Saturday evening. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to try to go ahead and have the cookie exchange next Saturday uh, from 2 to 4. And so that will be at the parsonage. Uh, don't complain because you're doing too much because I have to clean the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is next Saturday? Next Saturday, 2 to 4. We might want to get an email out. And if I got time, I'll make my mother's oatmeal cookies. That'll be worth coming just for that. <laughs> so we come to time of joys and concerns. Do we have any uh, joys or concerns that we'd like to lift up today? Um, if y'all will lift up Raymond, um, he is at the Burnt Hospital room 627. Luvon took him down late last night or early this morning, whichever. But um, he has small fractures in his spine, and um, they have given him some medication, so he is resting. So hopefully, Luvon's also getting a chance to rest. And I understand that's not from a fall, that's just from oh. lack of use. Mm -hmm. So Raymond will be in the hospital, so we will uh, lift up and ask for healing for, for him and, uh, and some uh, peace and quiet for Luvon. Mm -hmm. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to thank everyone for the thoughts and prayers for Tom's passing. Yeah, she was a she was a really part of this community. She'll be missed. Lord, in your mercy. Here yeah. are our prayers. Yeah. You know, you go ahead. We uh, have a birthday boy. Yeah, that dog sings yeah. already. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Cooper. Happy birthday. 
My sister is doing much better after her two falls, but um, we still need her prayers so we can find out what's making her fall. All right, for, for her, uh, for her, her healing and for uh, yes, she I is watching. I know she's watching. <laughs> so, Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Yeah. Our parents, I, I knew that you missed because of that. Now, any excuse to get out and come to the church, I know. <laughs> I have a joy. My nephew, Logan, but is graduating from the um, A&M campus in Texarkana next Saturday. Um, and he is already studying for his MCAT. Uh, he wants to uh, go on to medical school and be a radiologist. Mm -hmm. Logan. 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 For graduating, for accomplishments, and those things yet to be accomplished. Mm -hmm. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yes. I heard sometime one, one person said that the most wonderful words in the English language are uh, employed college graduate. <laughs> <laughs> Any other? Let's take a moment and put ourselves in the presence of God. Lord, you came at Christmas. There was no room in the end. We want to make room for you in our lives in our church, in our world. Bring peace and joy. They seem to be in short supply. Heal that which is broken. Lift up those who are pushed down. Put together that which is separated. We want to be ready. Remind us to consider what you did so many years ago. Remind us to consider what difference it makes to us today. Help us to remove all the obstacles that we put in your way. Let us hear the good news of Jesus and know that it is good news for us. We pray in Jesus' name and using his words when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Now we're going to hear from a prophet Isaiah who looked from a distance and saw Jesus coming. First scripture reading this morning comes from Isaiah 41 through 11. It's on your insert. You can follow along. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak compassionately to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her compulsory service has ended, that her penalty has been paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice is crying out. Clear the Lord's way in the desert. Make a level highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley will be raised up, and every mountain and hill will be flattened. Uneven ground will become level, and rough terrain a valley plain. The Lord's glory will appear, and all humanity will see it together. The Lord's mouth has commanded it. A voice will say, Call out. 
And another said, what should I call it? All flesh is, is grass. All its loyalty is like the flowers of the field. The grass dries up and the flower withers when the Lord's breath blows on it. Surely the people are blessed. The grass dries up, the flower withers. But our God's word will exist forever. <clears throat> Go up on a high mountain, messenger Zion. Raise your voice and shout, messenger of Jerusalem. Raise it, don't be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord God, coming with strength, with a triumphant arm, bringing his reward with him, and his payment before him. Like a shepherd, God will tend the flock. He will gather lambs in his arms and give them onto his lap. He will gently guide the nursing ewes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And our response is just below that, Psalm 85, 1 through 2, and 8 through 13. And our uh, words to our response are just verse 12, and it's printed in the book. Yes, the Lord gives what is good, and our land yields its produce. And it goes like this. Yes, the Lord gives what is good. circumstances for the better. You've you forgiven your people's wrongdoing. You've you covered all of their sins. Let me hear what the Lord God says because he speaks peace to his people and to his faithful ones. Don't let them return to foolish ways. God's salvation is very close to those who honor him so that his glory can live what is good, and our land yields its motives. Righteousness walks before God, making a road for themselves.
chapter the first verse. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look, I am sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted uh, to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan and were baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothing, clothes made of camel's hair and leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, The one stronger than I is coming after me. I am not even worthy to bend over and loosen the straps on his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. How do you prepare for Christmas? I will bet that you've already got down at least one box that was labeled Christmas. And you began to put out decorations. They're decorations you may have had for a long time. Or maybe some bought for sale last year after Christmas. But there are things that you want to put up to celebrate Christmas. There, there are probably presents that you probably had to buy for certain individuals that you probably do it every year. And there's some things, some baking that you probably did. Uh, my mother uh, made fudge every year, and we looked forward to it. And we would examine it before we ate it because she would put pecans in those at fudge. But she told us that if you get a piece of fudge that doesn't have a pecan, you can have another one. <laughs> We would look for some without food. We have the challenge in so we could have the sights and the sounds and the smells of Christmas take us back to all the memories we've built up over the years. I hope that one of those things is a Christmas Eve service so that you can enjoy that and remember all the Christmases before and we can read the Christmas story. What a beautiful story. We remember almost all the words. We could probably recite it from memory. But it won't be from the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark was the first one written. And he left out the birth story. Now there's lots of speculation on why he did that. Uh, first of all, remember that none of the people who wrote the Gospels were there at Christmas. That was 30 years before they got to know Jesus. None of them were there. There were shepherds there, there were angels there, the wise men showed up, but no authors. They had to depend on other people's stories. And maybe Mark just didn't have that part of the story. He starts out getting right to business. He says, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The good news. How is it good news? How is Christmas good news? It's a lot of work, isn't it? It's a lot of trouble. How is it good news? It's good news because Jesus was the Christ. In case you didn't know, Christ is not Jesus' last name. 
that is a title. It's the, it's the Greek form of Messiah, the Savior. They needed a Savior. The world was a mess. Israel was under occupation by Roman soldiers. The Roman government dictated when and what they should do and what they couldn't do. The Roman government taxed them heavily. The world was a mess. It needed a Savior. We always need a Savior. Isn't the world a mess today? A Savior came to turn the world upside down. To shake things up, to change reality, to turn the, what we think upside down, to give us a new way of living. He offered us a new way of life, a life of peace and joy and love, which is exactly, seems to be the opposite of what we have today. Don't we need a Savior still? Jesus is coming. That's good news. Not only did he come to be the Messiah, he also came as the Son of God. I think those are two different terms. The Messiah could be a, a human being that, that makes things right. Uh, by the way, he did that by being a suffering servant, not by being a conquering hero. He's a, he's a baby. He's not Rambo. He came in gentleness and love to offer us a better way. But he's also the son of God. God is not distant. God is not uncaring. God joins us in our struggles to live life and shows us how love looks. If we want to know what God thinks, we want to know what God does, if we want to know what God is like, we look at Jesus. We look at that baby born in the manger when he grew up and the love and the blessings and the healing that he did and the death and resurrection that showed that life conquered death. That's good news. So how do we prepare? You go back to Isaiah, which... Uh, you remember that Isaiah was during the Babylonian captivity. They needed a Savior then. And they needed a way back home. Remember they had been conquered. They had been hauled off into slavery. There really were mountains in the way. There really were valleys that they had to cross that were treacherous. They, and, and Isaiah says, look towards home. And the mountains will be made low and the valleys will be lifted up. The rough places will become smooth. That's exactly what they needed. But you see, the, the, the problems they had were not just outsiders. Prophet after prophet tells them about what the insiders, what they, they need to do to prepare a place, a prepare for the, the coming of the Messiah, about the, how they need to, to treat the poor better. How they had a sense of justice. How they needed to have a, a reconciliation with one another. They had not only exterior dress, but they had interior dress within the own, their own community, within themselves. They had to prepare their own hearts and minds. So we too have to prepare our own hearts and minds. What are the things that make us unable to get to where we're going. What are the mountains that get in the way that maybe we created? What are the valleys in which we get down in and get depressed and don't think there's any hope? What are the rough places that seem to rub us the wrong way? What are the things that we're doing? You see what he ready to crack on? Maybe the bacon will be ready soon. <laughs> We prepare our own hearts and minds, didn't 
as I was studying for this, I, I realized that when we look into ourselves to decide how to get right with God, we're not looking outside of ourselves and pointing fingers. We're looking at ourselves and saying, what can I do? Not what's wrong with them. There's a lot of finger pointing in the world today. Uh, pointing, pointing somebody else's problem, somebody else is the cause of it, and somebody else is less than human. You forget that when you do what John the Baptist suggests, and that is repent. Turn inward and look at yourself. Now, repent has got a bad name. We have talked about that before. Uh, repent means to turn and go in a new direction. It doesn't really mean what John, uh, Jonathan Edwards said. You know, sin is, I read this sermon several years ago, called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. That's not good news. Jesus Christ is good news. Jesus Christ offers us, show us what love is like, show us how to live our better selves, how to be a community together better. God offers an opportunity in Jesus Christ to accept the invitation to be our best selves and our best community, our best world. That's how we prepare for the coming of the Messiah. We offer, they offer us our best selves and we take it. That's good news. So we're preparing for Christmas. Finding out what, how God is going to come in the world of the, in today, this year, this year. And so we prepare ourselves to be overwhelmed with good news by removing the obstacles from God, from the things that keep us from experiencing God. Jesus is coming, and it is good news. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we hear God's word and feel God's presence, we uh, affirm our faith. Let us give words to that number 881 in the back of the hymn. And let me invite you to stand so we show the world what we stand for. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life of everlasting. Father, you give us the greatest Christmas gift ever given, your son Jesus, who gave us life and love, peace and joy. We return part of our gift of life to, the, to you, so that others might know it, know the joy and peace and love of Christmas. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
2.30, a little town in Bethlehem. <laughs> hope for true peace to all people. God's word brings us both comfort and challenge. We are accepted by love and commissioned for joy. Let's sing our blessing. Mm -hmm. 